The film you are about to see was made by the Flight Operations Technical Division of Northwest Airlines. In it, you will see takeoff and landing performance tests on the 727-251, the Northwest Airlines version of the stretched Boeing 727. The main purpose of the film is to show what happens to takeoff performance when improper techniques are used. You will see two series of takeoffs, seven with all engines operating, and four with an engine cut at V1, in which improper techniques such as late rotation, early rotation, and others are used. You will also see two landings in which maximum effort stops are made. On each of the improper technique takeoffs, only one thing is done improperly. In the late rotation case, for example, rotation is at the proper rate and to the proper attitude. The pictures thus do not show the effects of multiple errors, such as rotating both too late and too slowly. The tests were flown from runway 27 at Billings, Montana, with the airplane initially loaded to 140,000 pounds. The distance necessary for takeoff and climb to 35 feet at this weight was determined for the existing conditions of wind, temperature, and runway slope the distance being, in this case, 6,600 feet. For all but the first takeoff, the weight was less than the initial 140,000 pounds because of fuel burn-off. The EPR and runway length used for succeeding takeoffs were thus reduced in a manner that accurately simulated the initial weight of 140,000 pounds. To record the airplane's performance, a camera was set up beside the runway, 6,600 feet from the threshold end. A sighting bar was placed between the camera and the runway and aligned so that the airplane's main gear wheels would be even with the top of the bar if the airplane was at a height of 35 feet as it passed the camera. On each takeoff, the thing to look for is the height of the airplane relative to the sighting bar. If the airplane performs as it should, and is flown with the proper techniques, the main gear wheel should be at or above the top of the sighting bar. On this takeoff, normal techniques are being used. The airplane is being flown by the book. In this case, normal techniques are used except that rotation is started four knots late. Rotation here is stopped at 9 degrees until liftoff, after which it is continued to the proper V2 plus 10 attitude. Rotation on this takeoff was slow, about one degree per second, or roughly one half the proper rate. Rotation in this case was stopped at an attitude about two degrees less than the proper V2 plus 10 value.
Here, rotation is started early, about 20 knots below the proper value. On this, the last of the all-engines takeoffs, the EPR was set 0.02 below the proper chart value. In the next series of four takeoffs, the center engine is cut abruptly at V1 in every case. Normal techniques are being used on this takeoff. The airplane is being flown by the book. The center engine is cut at V1. Center engine cut at V1, rotation started four knots late. Center engine cut at V1, rotation stopped at 9 degree until after liftoff, then continued to the proper V2 attitude. On this, the last of the engine out takeoffs, the airplane was rotated to a pitch attitude about two degrees less than the proper V2 attitude. The final tests are, as the expression goes, something else. They show maximum effort stops on landing, but without the use of reversing. In both cases, main gear touchdown is 1,000 feet beyond the threshold. For the approach to touchdown, normal techniques are being used, except for a rather shocking fact. The threshold is crossed at threshold speed. Immediately following main gear touchdown, the speed brakes were extended and maximum braking was applied as soon as the nose gear touched down. Note the stopping position relative to the 2,000 foot runway markers. The smoke coming from the nose wheel does not indicate excessive heat, but rather that this is the first time the nose wheel brakes have ever been used. Nose wheel braking does not occur with a relatively limited pedal depression used on normal landings.
The brakes were new, and the smoke is due to the primer material burning off. For this final landing, the camera has been moved closer to the stopping point. Threshold speed. Touchdown at the 1,000 foot point, immediate speed brake extension. Maximum braking as soon as the nose wheel touches. Note that the stop is completed about even with the 2,000 foot markers which are actually 2,300 feet from the threshold end of the runway. Total stopping distance in both cases was approximately 2,300 feet. 1,000 feet of air distance plus 1,300 feet of ground distance. The following scene summarized performance in the takeoff tests you have already seen. The first seven are the all engines takeoffs, the last four are the engine out takeoffs. Normal rotation. Rotation four knots late. Rotation to nine degrees until liftoff. Slow rotation. Rotation to a too low attitude. Early rotation. EPR set 0.02 low. Engine out at V1, normal rotation. Engine out at V1, rotation four knots late. Engine out at V1, rotation to nine degrees until liftoff. Engine out at V1, rotation to a too low attitude. Now that you have seen these tests, these things should be apparent. First, the airplane will perform like the book says if thrust is set properly and if it is flown properly. Second, improper techniques, especially in the way rotation is handled, will appreciably reduce the height at the end of the runway. Third, the airplane has tremendous stopping capabilities. If speed at the threshold is not padded unnecessarily, if you do not delay speed brake extension after touchdown, and if maximum braking is used when needed. Reversing remains as an ace in the hole to help make up for reduced braking capabilities on slippery runways. In the takeoff case, it is important that takeoff EPR be set correctly, and it is especially important that rotation be properly handled. Specifically, that rotation be started at the proper speed, late rotation being particularly detrimental to takeoff performance. That rotation be at the proper rate, about two degrees per second, and that rotation be continuous from its start until the proper initial climb attitude is reached. Follow these recommendations and other things being within reasonable limits, the airplane will perform as it should. And although the tests shown were conducted on the Boeing 727-251, the adverse effects of improper handling and the recommendations to avoid them are applicable to other jet transport types.